He is on your right with Bant Nexus. Looks like he's taking a mulligan and scrying to the bottom. So we got David Thomas, Brian Basako, Jonathan Joe, Blue Best Death Shadow, Humans, Bant Nexus on your right against Benedict Shikuma playing Red Black Aggro, Ryan Ferris playing Burn, and then Jonathan Seaman playing Death and Taxes. Let's do this thing. We got a big Deadpool fan here, I think. Is that a Deadpool shirt? Is that yes, what that is? absolutely. Okay. I haven't seen the second one yet. You should. It's good. It's not as good as the first, but that's a pretty high bar. I didn't like the first one. All right, so Bumat Courier is a, a huge start here for, for Benedict. I think that any game the red-black aggro deck plays against Bant Nexus, uh, if they have a Bumat Courier, it just changes the entire texture of the game. They can start uh, ignoring things like uh, Fumigate or any sort of sweeper effect because they have a way to refuel. And because the Bant Nexus deck doesn't play a lot of spot removal, instead plays Fog, you could get anywhere from you know five to nine cards underneath your Bumat Courier before popping it. Carry Zev. Along with the Bowmat Courier here, Job off to a pretty slow start, unfortunately. Just a couple of lands, no ramping just yet, but of course this is the deck that ramps on the third turn of the game. Don't see any blue mana just yet either. Gary Zav's going to bring along a little monkey. Bowmat Courier is going to bring along another card. Yeah, Gift of Paradise is, is huge for this deck. Uh, not only do you get to gain some life, you get to ramp into an early Teferi. And when you untap, you actually get access to three mana. And that's important because when you start playing things like Supreme Will after uh, uh, game one, you know, it gets like a control deck. Supreme Will is a, a huge card to be able to untap with. Chikuma going to play a Dragon Skull Summon. Here's a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Little, little fun tidbit here about Benedict. He was our... Open winner at SCG Con earlier this year with Tron. Oh, nice. Yeah. We were covering so many things there. We couldn't cover everything. But the he won. The secret open. Yeah, he won the <laughs> secret open. So congratulations. I always feel bad when I top eight the secret opens. No, you don't, no one ever remembers. Nah, dog. Win's a win. <laughs> win's a win's a win. So notably, uh, Jonathan Job only has access uh, in the main deck to one copy of Settle the Wreckage as actual removal. So we could see a game where even if, if Job is able to uh, assemble a Teferi and a bunch of Hazapals and stuff, Benedict could just pop that big Bomac Courier and hopefully find uh, some of his actual direct damage. Things like Chandra Torch of Defiance. Uh, unfortunately for him, Unlicensed Integration, not really going to have a lot of targets in this matchup. No, it will not, unfortunately for Benedict. But he's doing a nice job of getting some damage across here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Four cars underneath the Bomac Courier for Chikuma. And yeah. I mean, this no is the, this is the start he needed, but this is the opening that Bant Nexus needs. If he's able to go to Ferry and then untap with a Haze of Pollen or a Root Snare, he's able to untap with this Teferi next turn, and that might just be lights out. The advantage of being able to untap with a Teferi is exactly where all the strength of this deck comes from. This will be a search for his Kanta after that irrigated farmland under the battlefield tapped. So Job is starting to get things set up a little bit here. One of the nice things when you're playing against Red Black is while their deck is very, very good, obviously, it's not the fastest with regards to dealing damage, especially when there are no targets for unlicensed disintegration. So here comes Glorybringer, Scrap Heap Scrounger, everybody else. Maybe not Scrap Heap Scrounger? Uh, there we go. He said attack with everybody. He, he was just, like, there's so many little things. Like, you have to get uh, the Ragavan for the, uh, the Carry Zev. You have to put the card underneath the... Uh, Bomac Courier, sometimes you have to exert the glory bringer. Hold on. I, I know we're not supposed to talk too much about bingo, but I just hit one. What you got? I got a glory bringer, attacks without exerting. Wow. Boom. Wow. I'm so good. Nick doesn't make the cards fair. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What? It's uh, five okay. to three. You're not that far behind. I might have another one in here somewhere. I haven't paid too much attention to it just because it's stupid. I'm sure you won't celebrate like crazy when you win. <laughs> oh, I will. Yeah, obviously. I'm one of the people who's off it when I'm losing yeah. and super <laughs> into it when I'm winning. Here's Charter Course from Jonathan Job. No Teferi yet here for our Bat Nexus player. Yeah, I mean, Benedict here, he's just going to present lethal over and over and over again and force Job to have a fog every single turn. 
Uh, it's it's not an easy thing to do. Like, playing a Fog is effectively minus a card, and if Job doesn't have some sort of engine drawing a card, like uh, Flip, Search for Escanta, Finding More, or Teferi drawing an extra card every turn, you know, he could just eventually run out of resources. See what Job's going to discard here. There goes a Gift of Paradise. Next up... Sunpetal Grove, pass the turn back. Now, as you mentioned, he does have one copy of Settle the Wreckage in his deck. A lot of cop a lot of versions of this deck don't play that card, or at least not many copies. So the one that Job does have could maybe take Benedict by surprise. Yeah. I mean, right now it looks like Job has only two cards left in hand. I know one of them's a Haze of Pollen, so he's not dead this turn. Uh, but next turn, he's not flipping Search for Escanta. So that other card is hugely important. Finding a Teferi, finding some sort of engine is just something he has to do very, very quickly now. Oh, there's your Haze of Pollen. If I were Benedict here, with, with all your creatures on the battlefield, uh, I might just pop the Bomat Courier and look for a Chandra. You want to be able to start chunking in a little bit of damage here and there. And uh, I think Bomat Courier is a, a fine way to do it. Like, when when is a better time to pop the Bomat Courier? Like, do you really need to get the sixth card, the seventh card, the eighth card? You know, just look at it now. I'm Maybe kinda, it's great. I'm kind of greedy. How many Chandras are in there? Uh, only two. Okay. Uh, but after sideboard, things get a lot better. You know, we have access to things like Banefire, Duress, more Chandras, uh, and Angath the Flame Chain, Oof. or Angar Angarath, Angarath. So don't see that. We got some, we got some stuff. Uh, it was in a one of in a, in these black red sideboards for a very long time. Uh, it kind of fell out of favor for a little while, but it's it's back with a vengeance now that uh, this Bant Nexus Fog deck is uh, starting to take over in a big way. That's is that an anticipate? Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't hit a fog off this, he might just die. That's a well. Now, and now we're to the point now where. Like, the fogs are just buying him time, but it's not like, hey, I'm doing a thing and fog. Right. The strength of the deck, as I said, you need an engine going. And he has the search for his Kanta, but he didn't have a way to really turbo flip it. So, you know, he didn't have the Teferi on turn four. And the black red or red-black aggro deck just presents lethal so quickly. Now Benedict might be thinking about blowing this... Uh this Bomat Courier. Love it. You present lethal with your other creatures already. Might as well go ahead and see if you hit something relevant. Not sure, though, is our red-black aggro player. Quick update here. Brian Basako does win game for one here with humans over Ryan Ferris playing burn. That's big for the humans player. That's an important one. And honestly, if, if Bosco or Bosco is on the play... And uh, has an early like champion of the parish or ether vial. That's exactly where you need to be in the matchup. You call him Bosco? Bosico. Okay. Basoko? Basoko. You know Bosco? Bosco breadsticks? Did you have those in high school? No. Really? Oh man. They were like I'm I'm from Alabama. I don't know. I, Bo Bosco for, breadsticks were not fancy, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow, this saddens me. We're Are those like the crispy ones with sesame seeds on them? No, no, they were. It's they're like breadsticks with cheese in them, and it's very clear where they inject the cheese. And the cheese, if you overcook them, the cheese just goes out, and it's it's like it's like it's like a mozzarella cheese stick, but it's a breadstick. I mean, that sounds pretty great. Yeah, when you're like 13 or whatever, and they have marinara sauce, and you just jam them for lunch every day at school. I mean, is this something they gave you at school, or is this something you had to bring to school? No, this is a, this was a, this is an item school lunch. Yeah, we so we had pizza, good mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah, uh, chicken fingers. Yeah, and like meatloaf, wow, and then maybe like loaf? some corn or whatever. I don't know. We didn't have no cheesy breadsticks. I would remember that. Bro, these weren't fancy. That's they were, fine. They were they were pretty bad actually. But it was Bosco breadstick day. You you ran it. I can't be the only. There had to be other people. Twitter. Who else knows Bosco breadsticks? Uh oh, Discord's going off. I think they might know Bosco breadsticks. Okay, this is <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst nexus of fate ever. I, I guess he. I guess he transforms search. It's not terrible. Yeah, I mean, again, things like nexus of fate, things like fog, they don't really get you anywhere if you're not doing something else in addition. The fog is buy you time to find something like Teferi. Nexus Fate is there so that you get to push your, your Teferis, your Karns, further and further towards Ultimate. But 
seven mana, take an extra turn, you know, only as good as what you're doing with the rest of that turn. And if the entire turn is cast Nexus of Fate, it's not that good. Will Benedict get another turn? That is the question. I guess Joe has no cards in hand. Now one after he drew. He'd have to string together something really nice, like Teferi, draw a card into Fog, just all of it. Yeah, I mean, right here, he has the option to uh, activate, search for, or sorry, I scan to the Sunken Ruin, uh, but he only has four mana after that, so it needs to be a Fog or Settle the Wreckage. Unless the card in his hand is a land, in which case he could play Teferi and then try to draw Fog. It's not looking great, though. No, he's just going to, okay, so he's just going to play a land past the turn back, so we're trying to get extra lucky now. Well, he just, he just wants to hit a Fog. He needs to hit a Fog. But he do, if he hits Settle the Wreckage, he doesn't want Benedict to know he has Settle the Wreckage. Yeah. All right. Ragavan, activate this. Two, three, four. Settle or Fog? Settle or Fog? See, personally, I like main phasing in this spot just because if you hit Teferi, you get a redraw. You get to play it, draw a card on tap. Yeah, you get to see one extra card if it, the card you find is Teferi. Yep. But in this instance, he just wants to protect the Settle the Wreckage, and I can respect that. Benedict. Takuma. The W is silent. Is going to win. Game number one here over Jonathan Job. As Red and Black Aggro is now up a game here over Banton Nexus. Take a look at the scoreboard here very quickly. David Thomas with Blue Act That's Shadow. He wins game number one there over Jonathan Seaman playing Death and Taxes. And then you've got Humans, Brian Bosako. Up a game there over Ryan Ferris playing Burn. Now we take a look at the sideboards. We're going to start with Joe, who's got four negates, three Carnage Tyrant, two Baral, Chief of Compliance, two Jace's Defeat, two Lyra Dawnbringer, and two Mystic Archaeologist. That's the two mana, two one. Pay three blue, blue, draw two cards from Core Set 2019. Todd, what do you like in this matchup? So I think uh, cards like uh, Mystic Archaeologist are, are more so for things like the Mirror. Uh, decks that don't have a lot of removal, and you just want more engine cards, more things like Search for Scanta, more things like Teferi, things that can get you ahead on overall resources. Uh, I don't like it here. Lear Dawnbringer, very obviously a slam dunk. There's a good chance that Benedict uh, cuts all of his removal, and in that scenario, a single Lear Dawnbringer can buy Job a lot of time. I don't think it's going to ever win him the game. It's going to basically play defense the entire time it's on the battlefield. So if Benedict is a heads-up player, he might leave in like Two unlicensed integrations or so, just in case, because if you can kill that Lear Dombringer and a swing in for the win that turn, that's a huge swing uh, for, for a game where Lear would normally dominate. Uh, Brawl Chief of Compliance, also pretty good in this matchup, I believe. It not only uh, turbocharges 90% of your deck or whatever, but it also just blocks some of the early creatures from Red Black Aggro. For Benedict, he's got three Duress, three Chandra's Defeat, two Chandra Torch of Defiance, two Magma Spray, and some one-ofs here in Banefire, a Braid, Rekindling Phoenix, Ongarth, the Flame Chained, and a Glorybringer. So things like Glorybringer, not exactly good in this matchup. You want to be citing out a lot of your more expensive cards that all they do really is attack uh, in favor of things that uh, are cheap and interactive. Duress, obviously a home run here. Uh, Chandra Torch of Defiance, very good because it can deal damage through the fogs. So if you're able to chip in early with your creatures and get your opponent to, you know, six or eight life, a single Chandra can end the game. Uh, Banefire, obviously very good. If you ever draw it, you usually kill your opponent on the spot because they're taking so much damage and have so little removal. Uh, other than that, Ongarth, the Flame Chain, also very good, very similar to why Chandra is. Well, those are the options there for both players. Jonathan Jill will be on the play here in just a moment, but we're going to take a short break so we can send a message here from Ultimate Guard. Go.StarCityGames.com slash Ultimate Guard to pick up your Matt Pod today as we get ready here for game number two between Jonathan Job and Benedict Chikuma. The W is silent. I can do that. That's easy. Okay. It's easy. Sometimes you see a name. So when I first saw that, you know what I first thought? 
Chumbawamba. <laughs> That's not how you pronounce that. That's not. That's not how you pronounce anything, actually. I mean, to be fair, it, it looks like Jonathan Job. It does. So, you it know. Does. You just have to, I mean, English pronunciation of words is so stupid. <laughs> Uh-oh. Twitter's blowing up. We got some Bosco breadstick fans here. I'm not saying I, they're not great. At I'm Will saying Kruger, I never had them. At Will Kruger 13, obviously no Bosco breadsticks. At Nathan of Nell something, Nell T, of Nell Toth, I am familiar with Bosco breadsticks. In fact, mentioning them gave me flashbacks to indigestion. So <laughs> thanks for that. Well, Nathan, you're not wrong. Uh, at Snow Jiggles, we had Bosco breadsticks at my high school, and I'm from one of the smaller cities in Tennessee. And at Scott Johansson, all the taco Brasco sticks hitting me right in the feels. Nice. There you go. Dude, I just, lo- I just remember, like, uh, rectangle pizza, that's yeah, with the the tiny little crappy cut pepperonis, yeah, the, the bargain, the, the cubaronis, yeah, like the bargain basement pepperonis. Yeah. I, school lunch, school lunch was dope. It wasn't though. It was bad, but who cares? I mean, it was basically just an hour break from classes or half an hour break from classes, you know. So in my school lunch, my freshman year, there was a guy named John Mackey, and he would dump a gallon of milk over himself, and then get thrown out of school. And this happened for a week straight. That's gas. Yeah. He would come in with a full gallon of milk, and he would stand on a table and go, ah, and then dump it all over himself. And we just couldn't get enough of it. And then eventually the principal said, you, you can't do that anymore. The principal did not like it the first time or the second time. I feel, I feel like the second time it's like, you should be suspended. He got what we called, did you have in-school suspension? Yes. Yeah, it was called CL. In our school? Oh, we just cor- called it ISS, I think. What, is, it, what is your... Oh, okay. Was, CL stood for corrective learning. Mm. It's the worst punishment there is in school suspension. It's horrible. So as, as far as I... I, I might have gotten in school, in school suspension once. I got it But once. I don't remember why I got it. And norm, normally you would think like if you're uh, like an A student who does something like that to get in school suspension, you would remember why. But I just don't. I know why I got mine. I'm not proud of it. Let's hear it. So I used to be, my senior year is when I decided I wanted to be bad. So, because my senior year is It's when, impossible to punish people when they're 18 years old. I just want to throw yeah, that out there. Yeah, I decided, like, I'm just going to do some fun stuff. So, what I, so a joke between me and some of my classmates were, we used to do this thing where we would just stop and point at the sky and look at the sky like we saw something, even though there was nothing there, to see how long we could do it. Like, p- people will come up to me and be like, dude, what are you looking at? And just would, you wouldn't say anything, okay? So I used to do this at study hall. I would come in a study hall in this huge auditorium, and I would walk in there. It wasn't my study hall, and I would point at the sky. And the study hall teacher would be like, what are you doing? And then I'd scream in their face and run away. <laughs> I got corrective learning for that. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever I know, heard. I know. <laughs> That's called being a kid, man. We're going to chart uh, a course. We're going to chart a so they would tap me on the shoulder and be like, hey, Cedric, why are you, what do you, what do you, leave. And I go, ah, and I run away. Okay. That got me in school suspension. And my dad called me a moron. As he should. Yeah. Yeah. Which <laughs> he was right. He was right. All right. Looks like we got some magic going on now. Bowman Career's got one card. Looking for a second one here in just a moment. And we'll see what else Benedict has to play on his second turn of the game. Kids, don't do that, by the way. If there are any kids listening. Don't do that. Yeah. Do, what, there's going to be some, like, hot new uh, Twitter video sensation, you know? <laughs> it's like this is the, the Drake video where, like, you know, people do the, the Kiki heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. And they're like, except they're just going to be filming a video where they're all just staring and, at the ceiling and pointing up. And then someone's like, what are you doing? And then just 50 people just jump out and go, ah! Yeah. <laughs> just leave the study hall teacher alone. They're all very nice. Well, actually, Mrs. Capcar was not nice. She was actually quite mean. But most of them are nice. Mrs. Capcar was mean. She took study hall way too serious. You're like that guy that makes references to stuff that no one has ever seen or thought of. But everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, but no one who's, knows who Mrs. Capcar is. But they'll Google her Stop now. doxing her. What does doxing mean? I don't know. <laughs> Here's a canyon slew. Jonathan Job is going to untap and draw. I think this is going to be the game where Jonathan Job gets an early Teferi and just rides it all the way home. 
Well, I hope so, because that's what the deck does, and that's why we're here. We're not here to see irrigated farmlands keep entering the battlefield tapped. That's for sure. Four mana, what we got? A Karn. Okay. Yeah. Put it up to six. There's very few ways for Benedict to actually kill it. He basically needs a haste creature because he doesn't have something like shock or lightning strike. He's uh, His removal effectively was just a braid and cut to ribbons and a license integration. I want to go to Job's hand. Irrigated farmland will go underneath the Karn. It's got a silver counter on it. Yeah, even if it's just... Uh, uh, Karn ticking up. You just want some sort of card advantage engine. You want to hit most of your land drops so that when you start casting Nexus of Fate, you can do something else with your mana on top of that. And, uh, you know, Karn, Teferi, these are all cards you want to be drawing early on so that your fogs actually do something. Like, you're not losing cards by casting your fog. Three cards under Bobo. Yeah, unfortunately, Chandra Torture Defiant got uh, nerfed a little bit with the rules change to Planeswalkers. Yep. So normally the Chandra would come here, tick up, and kill this Karn, but instead it looks like Benedict's going to just ignore the Karn altogether and go for the face. Well, this isn't the worst strategy. No, I love this play. You have to realize at some point with the, the red deck that your opponent's going to fog you out if you try to kill their, their Planeswalker, so hitting Karn in any way is just less damage you're going to do to the opponent. Because if you try to kill the Karn, they're going to protect it. We're going to go back over to Job now. Karn on six. Draw for the turn. Access to five mana. Still on the hunt for Teferi. Best card in the deck, obviously. Yep. He might have had Teferi, but his fifth mana came into play tapped last turn. Not 100%. Looks like he has a Fog, so if he has Teferi, he's in great shape. And Job deciding exactly how he wants to go about using Karn... And how he wants to navigate this turn. That's a Leer Dawnbringer. If uh, Benedict doesn't have uh, some way to deal one point of damage to the Lyra, it could dominate this game. Yeah, Chandra can, of course, deal at four. And then needs another way to clean it up. But, uh, like you mentioned, I imagine on License Integration out of the deck, obviously. Can't imagine that's still in the deck after sideboard. Yeah, I mean, it's you have to understand how sideboards uh, change matchups, though. Like... You can have a card in your deck that's really bad in game one, and so you side it out, but your opponent expects you to side it out a lot of times, and that leads to, to sideboarding uh, or postboard games where the cards change drastically in uh, how they affect the matchup. Like, for example, if you're playing humans and your opponent's playing, like, Jeskai Controller or whatever in Modern, you're going to side out Reflector Mage, right? That's, like, 101 sideboarding against... Uh, a control deck. They yeah. don't have creatures. But what if they have uh, Baneslayer Angel? What if they have Lear Dawnbringer? Like, what if they play that card and you can't do anything about it? You know? So in that scenario, like I talked about in my article a little bit, I actually like to sideboard in Dismembers. Just because Dismember can take care of a Celestial Colonnade. It gives you a blowout turn against Colonnade if you're attacking, which I love. War Reflector Mage doesn't give you that ability. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and worse come to worse, you can use it to take care of a Snapcaster Mage that might be trying to jump in and trade or something like that. So Job adds a little something here to the grip. Nexus Fate goes under. Here is Lear Dawnbringer. Okay, well, going to put him in the test. Do you have an answer to the powerful angel? Dude, chain, wall, chain Wall would be a pretty big deal here. Uh, getting that Lear Dawnbringer off the table. That feels like the card that is most likely to be able to take care of Lyra. Most other things uh, don't really do that. Five mana, five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink, other angels you control, get plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. I'm not positive. There's a card in Benedict's hand that I can't tell what it is, and I'm thinking it might be a Banefire, because I haven't seen that in a long time. And if he ticks up Chandra, he can actually Banefire the Lyra to death since he'll have access to six mana. Well, he does have Chain Whirler in hand, actually. Okay, that's but also great. He's going to plus. I think he's... <coughs> That's a good one, too. Okay, so it's going to be cut and then Chain Whirler. And that also gives him a way to put uh, ribbons into the graveyard. This is this is win-win. I love Every this way play. Around. This is so good. You also get to tick up your Chandra instead of down, pushing it further towards ultimate. Yeah, this is, this is great for him. Trigger. 
you know, and if worst case scenario happens, like if uh, Jonathan Job has a, a reset button, like with a, a fumigate or a settle the wreckage, you still have a ton of cards under that Bowmat courier. Uh, and if it's a wrath effect, you still have a Chandra at six. He's got a lot of bases covered here. And if Banefire is in the grip, like you mentioned, that now works itself into being lethal. Yeah, and because with the Chandra cut, plus. Cuts of ribbons in the graveyard, also very similar there. Yep. This is a great spot here for Benedict. Great spot. I can tell you that David Thomas is in a great spot, too. He won his match there over Jonathan Seaman. Two games to zero. Blue Black does shadow, and Legacy takes care of death and taxes pretty easy. Maybe those Dreaded Knights were helpful as we turn our attention back here to Job, who is in a, a world of trouble. This is looking very, very tough for him. I mean, he can minus the Karn here, get the Nexus of Fate to, to buy him, you know, get a free turn. But again, I think you want to be casting Nexus of Fate when you have something else to do. And if you're not only, you're, if you're minusing the Karn to get it, you know, you're not gaining that extra card. Uh, so it's it's not even really that good. I think he wants to try to get something like Teferi into play. But he still has to deal with a Chandra on six. Yeah, Chandra on six, almost to the ultimate. Naturally, when Chandra does get to her ultimate, the game is going to end. That's what happens there, assuming that Benedict would get a single turn back. So Job, as he flicks those cards around, we can tell he's in some serious trouble right now. He's trying to figure out the best way to navigate this, and I'm not even sure there's a good way to go about doing it as he's, you see him untap that gift of Paradise land. Very unsure of himself right now is Jonathan. I mean, you can really start to see how much this deck falters when it doesn't have Teferi on the battlefield. Yep. You know, we, we've seen uh, the Chandra come down already uh, and really start to uh, put the screws to, to, to the Band Nexus deck. You know, uh, Karn draws cards like Teferi, but it's not nearly as good. Your opponent gets to choose the card you draw. And if it's uh, land and a spell, they're always going to give you the land at, at that point. Yeah, Teferi kind of puts it in easy mode in some respects. I mean, it's, it's just such a powerful card that it makes things so, so easy. Karn, not exactly the same as now. It's going to go up to seven. Gift of Paradise and an island, obviously, as you mentioned. Going to give the land. And now Job will get to untap and take another turn. So a draw step coming here for Jonathan. And, of course, another Karn activation, too, be it up or down. But it, it really does revolve around Teferi right now. And if the Planeswalker can show up in combination with a Fog or Settle the Wreckage or something that matters. Chart a course again. One. Two. And Job, of course, will have to discard a card here. Chart, of course, a four of here in Job's deck, but he is beat as he extends the hand. He can't get anywhere. That's the problem. And the bigger problem here, Todd, in that first and second game, Teferi never showed up. Yeah, I mean, like I, I talked about most of the match, like you're trying to ramp into Teferi, and if you're able to, to get an early Teferi on the battlefield, uh, you know. Well, Job didn't win, but his team did. Well, that's lucky. And that's the power What's of team that feel like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Basako <laughs> did win his match over Ryan Ferris two games to one. So the team of Thomas Basako and Job win the match. The match that we, that we got to watch between John.